Hello and welcome to Happy Hour again, coming to you today from the beautiful social distancing home studios located in Ventura and Camarillo, California. And welcome back to Happy Hour again. I am one of your hosts, Curtis Taylor. You can see up in the top left, that is Jason Hendrick, and down in the bottom is Joby Yobi. But that doesn't mean anything to you right now because, of course, Jason is the one recording, and who knows what his orientation is. Well, if you want to know my orientation, I've got Joby in my upper left corner. I'm in the upper right corner, and you're down in the middle. There it is. See, I'm the guy holding the uh, lovely Ventura Spirit SoCal sidecar right now getting ready to take a sip of this refreshing summertime drink because it was mm, hot in SoCal today. Yeah, what was that? Like 78 degrees? Like, listen to us. <laughs> I, it, it affected, as Joby was alluding to earlier, I think it affected our servers because we were having a little bit of trouble getting online tonight. It may have melted their, uh, their core processor or it, it, maybe they got the melted virus. Facebook. Melted Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got the virus all over the place, definitely. I, uh, I had to join uh, Jason on the Ventura Spirits. I went for the gin, the right. water gin. I'm just doing a gin and tonic now. I had a martini earlier. It's nice. It's great. We got some good love from uh, Henry and Andrew from last week's show, and you know the product's great, so I, I figured we'd carry it forward. Now, we did talk, you know, Curtis, you and I were talking earlier today and last night about what tonight's show was going to be about. And especially the first segment and the fact that it was May the 4th and everybody's all, you know, May the 4th be with you. So, of course, I watched a little Star Wars today. I don't know about you guys. Do you watch a little Star Wars today? I did not uh, watch Star Wars today, no. Uh, they, I, all I right, have, I, have, I have an R2-D2 Tiki. Perfect. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> that so, you know, awesome. I was telling you, Curtis, offline that I had a tie-in to May the 4th that had nothing to do with Star Wars. And you were wanting to know about my bat story. So, Joby, I don't know if you saw the bat that I posted. I, I did see your bat story, yes. Okay. <laughs> so, remember in Empire Strikes Back when they land in the cave, the tunnel, and all of a sure. sudden the big bats are flying around? Right. That was kind of my vision, actually, when I opened my bathtub Saturday morning. <laughs> I pulled the slider back. I was... You know, we've had some trouble lately where because nobody's getting up early and taking showers, the hot water's not coming to the third floor in a timely fashion. <laughs> so I'm like, forget it. I'm going to waste a little water. I'm going to turn on the sink and the shower. I'm going to bring that hot water up because I got to do dishes, whatever. And I open the door and there's this little brown pile of something I couldn't figure out right away. I'm like, what the fuck is that? It was a little bat. I don't know how it got into my apartment. It must have been either Thursday night when I left the window open or sometime Friday, you know, before I closed things down. I closed my window around 7.30. It had to have been before that. And it was there all night long until the morning. Tiny little bat, right? And I, I called my dad. I'm a 41-year-old man. I'm like, how the frick do I get a bat out of my bathtub? I don't have any leather gloves. I don't want to touch it. Of the broom. <laughs> I didn't I know what to do. <laughs> And nobody was answering. So I'm like, screw you guys. Let me, let me nut up here a little bit and figure this out. So I covered it with my, um, my dirty coronavirus bandana <laughs> and, so, and slowly picked it up. You gave the back corona. Yeah. Way to go. Right back at you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I, I was able to scoop him up in the bandana and put him out the window and the little thing hopped along a little bit on the roof and finally flew away. But I was blown away. I've never been that close to a bat and I have no idea again, like how he truly got into my apartment and laying in the bathtub, but he was, he was a scared little dude. But it, when I first opened that slider, man, I swear it was like when those, those creatures were flying around at the, uh, the Millennium Falcon, they look, he looked huge for a second. All I'm, all I'm, I'm envisioning is Jason as Princess Leia when they come up and they flap right onto the window and they got that little sucker mouth, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you're an asshole <laughs> hey no you're you brought up the you brought up the the worm tunnel thing you're yeah. right, and, you're and right. I, just, I just posted in um in youtube maybe you two you, maybe you two know this is that uh, uh what was the name of the what were the name of those creatures uh i don't oh, remember I don't scary bat wing looking remember. things so so I'm looking, so I'm 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 looking around and and waiting for our uh, our Star Trek Star Trek Star Wars um, junkies to um, correct me and and to prob properly haze me on calling Star Wars Star Trek in the first yeah right right 
Well, so we've got May the 4th, we've got all the Star Wars stuff happening. And then also, because I am a huge Arrested Development fan, today is Cinco de Cuatro, which was Lucille Bluth's way of of trying to get everyone drunk so that they wouldn't go out on, on Cinco de Mayo <laughs> and keep everyone home. Wait, oh, I, I, what, was the, what was the reason for it? So they wouldn't well, go? Be, be, the reason was in, in true racist blue th- um, fashion was that she wanted all of her housekeepers home to help her with, with whatever her morning martini happened to be. And she was oh pissed that gosh. they were taking the day off in Newport. <laughs> Uh, so, Joe, you can uh, talk so about any of you who are, what's that? No, no go ahead. <laughs> well, and so, any uh, any Arrested Development fans out there know um, know that that's certainly um, today has a, a special meaning to all of us underground Arrested Development fans. And but today, I was thinking about you, Joby. Yeah, today is typically like a um, a preparatory day yeah. for uh, Joby's beautiful Cinco de Mayo extravaganza. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm kind of, I'm kind of bummed this year. And then I feel like I should have done, I, you never know, I may pop in tomorrow with a, a virtual uh, happy hour, or sorry, happy hour, a Cinco de Mayo, Jovo de Mayo uh, event. But yeah, it's actually my favorite, it was my one of my favorite days. I think St. Patty's Day with the parade in downtown was definitely uh, up there, 4th of July. And, uh, but I think Cinco de Mayo, just in terms of, it's nothing more than just a drink and um, <laughs> celebrate a battle that nobody even knows that it doesn't get celebrated in Mexico. That's the best part of it. Right. But what it ended but up yeah. being the restaurant was great is that uh, due to a lost bet, Joby, there That's right. been, um, it turned into a major event at the restaurant where you, how many years ago was that where you actually dressed up in an old abuela dress? And um, I think we did, I think we did four of them because I was, Trying to think, I think today would have, or today, tomorrow would have been the fifth. Um, and it's it, it's the uh, the sellout day of the year, right? Because normally we don't have uh, macro. And I don't even know what ca- they're called. There was controversy the first the time we did. Yeah, the, the staff almost rebelled the first time we did that. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if the macro term still applies or not independent, but uh, but anyway, shout out to um, the guys from Dos Equis. The one time of year we put the beer on tap. I mean, they came through with shirts. I saw a guy on the 6th of May, so the day after, possibly hung over walking down Thompson with the shirt on. Oh. And that was a funny thing to see my, <laughs> see my face on some guy's back. That's awesome. <laughs> well, and it what was cool is that each year we started uh, shifting charities, and it turned into a big event. Because that first year was kind of fun, but it was small. Yeah. And then, you know, as we switched brands, they brought out, you know, the van with all the people. Like, yeah really support it was crazy yeah and mariachi we had a mariachi band in the in the restaurant it was, it's fun to have a mariachi band it's fun to have the pipe and drum guys during st patty's that's what's cool so yeah i'm feeling a little bit uh i'm, I'm missing i'm missing the socializing today for sure like this week single mile so but on that note i mean there's a lot of people doing cool stuff where you can get stuff and you know do your single at my at home which, I mean, that's cool, but most of us have been home. I don't know. Do we really want, do we want to keep celebrating at home? But I've seen some cool promos where I can get, like, tacos. Because it's Taco Tuesday and Cinco de Mayo. It was like the stars had aligned for the perfect celebration night tomorrow. I do I do appreciate the, the stars aligning with this one. That is... It's it's whenever a Friday the thirteenth ends is on a Friday kind of thing, you know. The thirteenth is on a Friday, whenever any taco related things are on a Tuesday, it's always good for us. So are are you, uh, Curtis? Are you planning to celebrate any Cinco de Mayo Taco Tuesday, coronavirus type of uh, of thing? No, I don't think so. I haven't really even thought about it, other than. Um, just sort of nebulous out there that it's coming up. Um, I am out of beer. Well, I'm on my last two beers. So I may, <laughs> so, so it seems like there's a trip to the store in my future tomorrow. So yeah, maybe, it might be a good day to get some, get some uh, uh, burrito fixings. And, um, and, you know, I, we've been out of, tor- we haven't had a tortilla in the house in oh. six weeks. Come on, so, Curtis, you yeah, live in Southern California, you know how many tortillas? You're in Southern California? 
Yeah, exactly. I know, <laughs> like, but they, but the last, the last time I was stocking up, I actually took the last two tortilla packages off the Vaughn's shelf. You know that that end cap that is always like stuffed. Exactly. It's like everything is falling out. There was nothing, and they were these. They were the super soft eight inch tacos, <laughs> like tortilla <laughs> shells. <laughs> so thinking about super soft shell, what is your take on the, the, the gordita? Because when it first came out, the gordita, I thought that was amazing. You got a hard shell wrapped with beans and a soft. I still, I still think it. I still, um, in in terms of gordita, I think it's all right. I yeah, like all it. Right. right. I like the I like the crunchy, and I like that that taco didn't fall to pieces when you bit into it. I think that was the marketing yeah. genius. Yes, that was beautiful. Yeah. I didn't like when they switched it to the uh, the cheese sauce in between though. There was something it didn't bind right. the same well the same way. I liked it better when the refried beans were the binder between the soft shell and the hard shell. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, you know what, Curtis? You know what sounds good for Cinco de Mayo tomorrow? Some breakfast burritos from uh, El Stablo right down the street. Oh, oh yes. And some micheladas. I'm just saying, I don't know, we can stay six feet apart. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> well, some All of the right. burritos that are big like up there, then it'll shorten. So were you, did you just say Establos here in Camarillo? Yeah, I did. Yeah, they are open too. So yeah. we, could, we could get in and we could go sit in the parking lot <laughs> or go over because there's no train service anymore. And so... Um, so the uh, the Amtrak station right across the street is pretty hobo free. So we could just go <laughs> and sit and eat. With that. So no chance of being like bombarded about spare right, burritos. Right. Hey, All right, you gonna eat that? You gonna eat that burrito? Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah so. of course. Yeah. <laughs> I was kind of like, God, just I can go get another one. I'll go do that. With our luck, the police will come up and we'll be drinking, and there'll be we'll be the bums that are drinking <laughs> everything. <laughs> Just doing? like, just like on Saturday, man. Of course, they open yeah. the promenade. They open parks for limited access, but no beach access. The promenade was full of people walking in groups that were clearly not from their household. People everywhere. Oh, but the that, Jason. It, uh, come on, let me. It was pretty clear. There were some people that did not look alike. But then the cops were going through, and they were booting everybody who was sunbathing and hanging out 100 feet apart. Like you can't lay here. But those 10 people that just walked down yeah. the promenade, they can hang out together as long as they're Yeah, no, they're fine. As long as they keep it moving. It's all about keeping keep it moving. moving. Keep I, moving. I, yeah, we were, well, in the interest of, you know, future listening and archives, this is week, I believe, eight or nine. I'm not, I can't remember now. Yeah, I, I think it's at least uh, eight. And what Jason is referring to is the uh, the easing up, the stage one of our re Reopening, I guess. Reopening California. Yeah. Reopening the world. Are we gonna have a big banner, like a grand reopening sign? Like, is, no, is that how we're gonna no do it? From the space, no like from the reopening. from the satellite, you'll see a big banner across California. that says "Grand Reopening." We're open now. Open. <laughs> no, I don't think there's gonna be a big reopening party. I think it's a no. slow, gradual. I think. I think there's. I think. I think before we get to the the, the big slow gradual one, is that there's going to be a major reclosing of everything coming. Oh, in. Sure oh gloom and doom. Come the Death Star. On. So like far, you, you made the fourth people. It's... The Death Star just fired. I feel like. I feel like we. I feel like it's in the script. You're right. It's. Yeah, kind of... you all know it. I'm just the I one who's you. saying it out loud. You're right. You're probably right. But I tell you. In restaurant terms, Joby, what you're saying is that technically it'll be a soft opening. Just family and friends are well, invited. Well, they keep saying that. They keep saying soft beach opening. It's confusing the hell out of me because I'm like, soft opening is like, you know, friends and family come over. We'll do a trial run. This is like, yeah, that's nah. what all the friends and family eat for free. And then later you look at the yeah. budget and you're going, holy shit, how did I overspend my soft opening? Yeah, but, but they help you test out your POS system, as, <laughs> as you know. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. Well, well, anyway, so this is week eight and we're going to reopening um but anyway i don't know i was at the harbor sunday yesterday and people were getting their food and beverage and then just sitting down somewhere which i thought that's great what's what's wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that yeah or sitting this, in their car and uh lots of alcohol was being consumed for sure the, cons the curtis uh perspective may be a little different from ours but i'm getting close to the as long as the hospitals are equipped let's just see what happens you know people are they're doing it anyway and you know, the more you, we're caging people in, the more aggressive I think they're leaning in terms of yeah. you know, getting some kind but, of freedom. So we'll see what happens. I know for right now, I've got my SoCal sidecar. I've got you guys, and I'm pretty content. I like that. I, I wanted to bring up something that I, you know, when you feel like you were born at the wrong time or you turned 21 at the wrong time yep. or not 21, 
apparently, um, youngsters under 21 year olds, this is something that occurred to me about a week ago, are ordering alcohol shocker online and having it delivered to their house. <laughs> right. It's so shocking. Well, I was, you know, I, I had beer delivered for the first time last week, two weeks ago. And there was no check. It says that, yeah, you're going to be checked. Yeah. But this guy is not wanting to spend any time close to me, just drops it off. I just happened to be outside, but he was on his way gone. Like he had dropped the box guys, and was walking away. you're going to ruin it for everyone. Stop. Oh, no, it's already, it's already don't, been ruined. Don't draw it's awareness to ruined. it. I, Wait, it's already been ruined, Jason. More, it's, it's ruined. Been it's been more ruined. power to him. More power to him, you know? Like if this... It, this would have been a gold mine for us. We just we just don't have to worry about it, I guess. So it just makes me mad that you know these kids these days they get to, they've got it so easy. They, they can press one button. All they have to are you twenty one and they press yes. Did you just all say they have these to do kids is, these days? Oh my god! All they have to do is stay at home, sleep until noon, yeah. and get and make sure they're up for their alcohol deliveries. Yeah. God damn it! Just leave it at the door. It's the best. Is this going to be another show where we put the in front of everything? So the <laughs> Facebook Live wasn't working. The young kids get off my lawn. They order, off, of, they, they order off the Grubhub and then they just <laughs> showed up at their door. Yeah. The with a capital T H and E, like it's all caps. The <laughs> kids, the Facebook. Well, I mean, it's true. This, I mean, look at it. what a what a time to be eighteen. I know. I or sixteen. You. I don't know. I'm just saying. Uh, Yes. In, in true spirit of what we're talking about right now, those were the days. Those were the days. <laughs> right. It is. So, Jason, look like you're about empty there. I, right. yeah, I'm getting a little empty. The, the cocktail was great. I may switch over to a beer just to freshen things up. I did like the idea of the, uh, the summer shandy that was on the website uh, yeah. because you guys pick on me about my Pilsner and lager love these <laughs> days. All you got to do is mix some limoncello with a lager or a Pilsner. Um, so I yeah. may go that direction. Also, just a shout out to one of our local breweries because again, I'm on the Pilsner kick. Topa Topa is coming out with a new one. They're going to be launching their new Pilsner this uh, weekend. So oh, it's not just Pilsner, Jason. It's Italian. Pilsner. True, touche. It has origins, it, has roots. It, it has oranges and Made West actually also came out with Italian Pilsner. So I feel very disconnected that I'm not really sure what Italian style Pilsner. I don't either, but it had Pilsner, Pilsner in the name, so I'm on board. <laughs> is it, but that's what Pivo Pils is, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Pivo was Italian time? style, correct. Yeah, yeah Pivo was delicious. Joby, so, uh, I think based on your background, if we could coordinate and collaborate with Curtis, who does have some homebrewing equipment, we could do a, an Argentinian or a Syrian Pilsner. I'm not sure what that means either, but if we could find a way to incorporate that, we might have a new niche. You put some chimichurri in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some chimichurri wings sound great right now, Joby. <laughs> Jason's mind always goes to uh, wings. I love it. Have you gotten wings? Have you gotten some yet? I have not gotten any wings lately. I did. You're ooh. Oh. I when we come in from break, I will show you. Before we go to our special guest tonight, I will show you your new bandana. Though it did arrive, the buffalo wing bandana arrived. Awesome, thank you. It's ready to go, so you can stay safe and promote your your trade and namesake. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, that, seems for, like a good, that seems like a good spot for us to. Um, should should to, we pause? I, I don't want to wait for the anticipation. I'm going to get it right. Now. Okay. <laughs> it's 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 Christmas time all over. Right? I know. I love it. It's good. And, Christmas and for those of you who are who are who are catching up and trying to figure out what the hell is going on, so um, this is from two episodes ago, oh, maybe perhaps. That is awesome. And and. Jason had a hunkering for buffalo wings, but didn't want to order off from Oxnard for some reason because that was just too far away from him. Jason has wanted uh, wings for about eight weeks now. Thank you, Jason. That, I can't wait to rock that. I'm gonna. I, I'm excited. Gonna be upgrade you know, from my double dare, my double dare one that I'm using right now. Nickelodeon. We gotta stay safe in style while promoting our our brands. Right. Yep. All right. Speaking of that, let's promote some brands by having a drink. <laughs> all, all of the drinks so before we go to uh, break those the 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 people who are listening live just know that uh we i've got a big announcement here for us all because these two have been um, um pestering me this for like six weeks now to get these things back on podcast so we are now officially on spotify podcast so if you are a spotify user you go ahead and look for happy hour again there 
also, uh, I just got a notification right before we went on air this evening that we're back up on iTunes at Happy Hour Woo-hoo! again as well. So, we're, fa- we're officially uh, like rebooted know, then. Is that like that can is, we, it we, is? We are our old so as we go into break, then no, 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 the old ones are not out because because of the the slight rebranding because Happy Hour was already taken, uh-huh. and right. that by about seventeen other seventeen dozen other Happy Hour podcasts. Sure. Um, right. So so what we'll be doing is we'll be I'll be putting um, as we go through I'll be. Uh, putting in throwbacks as we go along. Oh, that's awesome. That'd be so great. Little teasers we'll of our history. One. Right. right. So, so we'll have a new one. And then we'll have, right. All of the way. So I'm waiting we'll for you to talk again so I can talk over you one more time. One more time. So as we get going <laughs> with this, I've got a mosquito buzzing around me right now, but as we get going to this, we'll um, at, I'll do the, the backlog of all of those. Um, you know, as video goes, YouTube is the place to go. We've got about, I don't know, maybe a dozen episodes or so. Otherwise, the rest of them disappeared. I'm not sure where they went. We're going to bring them back, maybe. though. And just to be clear, if you weren't following all that rambling and stream of conscious, consciousness as I talked over Curtis three or four times, we're back up on our podcast streaming, but also we're rebranding because after our hiatus of a few years with Curtis's Master of Fine Arts, congratulations. We never really like celebrated that, sir. And with Joe B's restaurant, my working with the restaurant, you know, we had a little hiatus, but we're back. So we're happy hour again. Every week we do a show, it's happy hour again. And when we get out of this freaking mess of a virus shelter in place, quarantine, no beach access crap, we'll be happy hour again. So that's going to be the rebrand. The show will be moving to happy hour again, future and current. Again. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be coming back in five minutes with a special guest tonight. We're shifting our format and our platform just a little bit. We're going to have some beverage talk, but it's not going to be all beverage talk because we're going to go behind the runway and we're going to learn all about what it was like to be a male model, what those after parties and cocktail parties look like, and all kinds of cool stuff with our special guest, Howard Cumberlander. Joby, Jason, and I wanted to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook page at Happy Hour Again, and follow us on Instagram at Happy Hour underscore again. Happy Hour Again can also be found on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, and TuneIn Podcasts. If you enjoy the music we play in the breaks, you can search for our playlist on Spotify. Look for the Happy Hour Again soundtrack by Hophead Said, and you'll find a playlist with hours of drinking songs. Okay, welcome back to Happy Hour again. Jason, take it away. Excellent. I'm Jason Hendrick, your co-host. We got Joby Yobi up in my left corner and uh, Curtis Taylor down in my left corner. We got a special guest coming in. We want to remind everybody, too, who's listening and watching to find us on Instagram at happyhour underscore IG. We're going to be doing a rebranding. We'll be Happy Hour again moving forward. We also got ourselves on Facebook. But tonight, we got a fun special guest We've got former male model and current friend of mine, Howard Cumberlander. He's going to talk to us all about what it was like to be a male model, some of those after parties, some of the cocktails. I'm really excited to bring you into this conversation. Howard, how are you on this Monday night? Tell us all about your world. (laughs) Well, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. I really, truly appreciate the opportunity to come on and talk to you and meet everybody and uh, just, you know, just being... Uh, of in action during this crazy time because you know we're all just trying to have fun in any way we can so uh thank you thank you for filling my monday night up you're you're welcome welcome, (laughs) howard you're welcome howard and i think uh, we all feel the same way this is why uh i mean jason talked about it it maybe just mentioned it in the first segment about we've been on a hiatus for three years and then we came back about came back together about a year ago, and then it was about another year after that. But like we are, um, we needed each other's uh, uh, companionship to not to sound too um, whatever about it, but you know, just too sentimental. But it was that's we look forward to Monday nights now, getting yeah. together and just being able to hang out um, and and then share our our experiences, our our happiness with with whatever drink is in hand and whatever the <laughs> topics are that are driving us through the week. Yeah, and that's part of why I'm excited to have you on Howard, because we were talking about experiences that have been had and 
you know, you and I are in a different capacity these days, but we want to hear, I want to hear, let me not speak for the whole group because I brought you on as a guest and they're going to have to deal with it. <laughs> but I want to hear about what it was like to be a male model. And I want to start with how many times did you turn left? Were you able to turn left? And in what capacity are you talking about turning left? <laughs> That's a great response. Let's, let's maybe that. clear that up. That's I a mean, very intellectual response. Left? Well, because in preparation, okay, not to make a farce of this whole segment, because again, you're a good friend of mine and we're going to have some fun with this. Yeah. But I did watch <laughs> Zoolander to prep some of my, my <laughs> material, right? And the scene that sticks out of me where he's like, he's this great you know, male model, but I definitely oh. focused on the competition and the battle. And he's like, all Hansel had to do was turn left. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's pretty so, good, pretty good I'm Zoolander done. voice. I'm so done. there's not as much uh, action in in a sense. That's a that's a show, right? That's that's a that's that's a a characterization of a, of a model. But I think, and it's funny because I think that's probably more synonymous to how women feel as male models than men do. Now that okay. I think about it. Because yeah. most guys that when, when I was doing this, and by no means was I a big model, I was a stock model. So, and that's a little different than what you see these big guys doing, you know, big campaign ads, but I did work. Um, what, what most guys do, especially when I was doing in the late 80s and 90s, was more so very, very strict, very, very uh, boy next door, not a lot of, not a lot of movement. So it's kind of funny when they have a Zoolander kind of situation because it's not really what model, male models did. That was probably more the affinity of a female model, knowing, okay. you know what I mean? The drama and all, and most guys were just like doing it like part-time or just it's some, their girlfriend or their, somebody said, you look good, take, some, take your shirt off, take a picture. And next thing you know, you have four models or somebody knocking down your door and that's kind of how it is. And you might, some do well, some don't do as well, but, that's kind of how I look at Zoolander, if, if that answers the question. So turning left, we pro I probably didn't know that reference because <laughs> it kind of came out late, later too. When it, you no, know, that's fair. That's fair because we want, definitely want to know the reality of what your world was like. You know, I made a joke, and uh, you know, I'll relinquish this some of my co-hosts, but we did make a joke about the after parties and the lifestyle. Oh yeah, it's well, only because true. we. I personally only have this embellishment and this characterization, like you said, of what that world looks like. Right. Actually, you right. know, what you may not, none of you know about me probably is that when I lived in Indianapolis, I did a little modeling as well. And I got into it on a spoof. I thought, you know, maybe it could be fun. I took some pho photographs and the guy's like, yeah, did you ever, because I was actually building, um, I don't remember why I was building a, portfolio. a little photographer portfolio, portfolio. but yeah. through that process, they're like, you should try some, you know, this runway stuff out. And honestly, it didn't go anywhere. The runway modeling I did was just in Indianapolis. It was just bridal shows. It was fun. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, yeah. it was, there was something cool about coming out to music and really digging into that, that kind of party vibe. But it wasn't anything super glamorous. And it, to really be a model, it was clear to me right away, it was going to take a lot of work. And it took the right little click of moment to be yeah. found. But, you know, yeah. ultimately, I don't have any reference. And most of us don't have any reference of what that world really looks like. Well, you know, I'm probably uh, talking to um, talking from a, a, a certain vantage point that has passed in a sense. This was over. I was working probably over a decade and a half ago. So, you know, the thing things have changed now. I mean, tremendously. I mean, there's a lot more uh, inclusion of uh, of all types of models now. There was a certain mode that, or mold, I should say, that male models, especially ethnic male models, had to, to be in. And that was typically um, very, very fair, on the very, very fair spectrum, where they were almost um, uh, so fair that they could pass to be white, or very, very fair where their features were more, um, you know, more uh, aquiline, you know, or they were on the opposite spectrum, like, um, like Tyson Beckford, who was, you know, real brown skin with really interesting features. And then you have some people in the, in the middle, which is where I kind of swam, what they call 
uh, models like me, and especially the complexion I have, was brown paper bag. And it was, it was a very popular term because there was a lot of brown skin models that kind of fit in the same, same category. So either the ones on either spectrum, uh, they seem to be more sought after. This is just the times. We're talking about the late 80s and 90s. Okay. Um, now things have changed. But to your point, Jason, yeah, it, uh, the parties were spectacular. I mean, because those were the way, those were the ways you get seen. That's just how you get seen. That's how you pick up jobs. Just like anything else, um, it's a it's a look business. So you go there to get numbers and contacts, and um, you know a lot of people fall in that, literally fall in that in that environment because there's so many things going on. Especially if you're 19, 18, coming from Wyoming or Iowa. As a, and not knowing anything, you know, I came from Chicago, so I had a little bit of hoospa about myself. I didn't just walk into like the lion's den. But, you know, we have those. That's that's the horror stories of it. But yeah. but on the most part, it's fun. You know, I mean, you're you're doing you're you're getting your pictures done. You're getting a lot of attention. Um, you're getting a lot of validation. But there's a lot of nose too. So you have to really grow a hard skin too. Well, for and, and especially for us, you know, for people like me. So, but it was well, fun. I think that's a, it's, you bring up this, this really interesting eye-opening kind of thing too, because where I, I, I see how um, at cocktail parties or at mixers, that those are work events, oh, yeah. right? And, and the ones who aren't taking themselves seriously are the ones who are, are drinking too much, are doing whatever it happens to be because they don't realize that this is that spot where you're talking about you're going to get your next gig you're going to be able to drop your name um your your card whatever it happens to be your number and then get that next job like if you're falling down or if you're you know just over in or if you're inebriated that's just not going to happen no no and you know i, I think you know i, I think it, it is it is that kind of industry where you know the levels of enjoyment are high. I mean, you know, you're not talking about talk. You're not talking to people that are aerospace engineers. You're talking about people that are and talking. Well, you could be if they are a client, but sure. I mean, for the most part, you're talking to people that are in the beauty and look business, <clears throat> the the business of selling beauty or an image, and for those that kind of fall into that category. Um, you know, it's a very, it's, it's very specific and every, all eyes are on you. I mean, especially when you're in that time where you're trying to seek out agencies and, and management and it, it, you know, it's very difficult and it's, and it's, it's very hard to, to center yourself in the fact that you get told day after day after day after day that you're not, that you don't look good, even though you're in a looks business. You have to grow a skin. You have to grow an ability to know, to kind of laugh at yourself too, because they're gonna tell you a million times that you're not right for something. And then you get like a few jobs to tell you that you are right and that you're the best thing ever. So you have to kind of balance that. Right. But um, you know, for what it's worth, I think it's 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 good it's good building of, of your, of, of who you are, you know, you, you either going to sink or swim in that kind of business, you know, um, for me, my, you know, self-esteem gets knocked all the time, but it just kind of makes you feel like, you know, eh, you know, I'm, I'm all right. You know, I can, and it gives you like that humbleness that, you know, other people take it to a different level, you know, and we see that in today's world, like, you know, I'm talking about 10, 15 years ago, it's just probably the same, but, but today's world, you can see that it's all about me, me, me. Back then, it was a little different. It was about you trying to be something as opposed of you already being it and showing the world. It's a little different in my mind yeah. because we didn't have internet and podcasts 15, 20 years ago. Sure, you know, you're I was definitely out hustling on some level. You're pitching your own identity. Yeah, you're, you're, out your... there, you're out there. You're hustling, absolutely. So there's a level of humbleness then that I don't <laughs> – probably see now as much you know it's interesting Joby I'll pitch to you real quick I'm as I'm listening to Howard and Curtis talk about that that the pitching of yourself and that being seen but also you know not knowing you know how to conduct yourself in a crowd that may provide you opportunity it reminds me of those times where we were at beer festivals and we were at charity events where there's you know beer or and beverage was a huge focus of drawing oh, yeah. attendees in yeah. and some of the vendors and some of the staff they didn't view it with the same seriousness I think that you and I did and 
we saw people all the time that were, you know, really hindering or stomping on their own brand without realizing it by getting too drunk and by enjo <laughs> enjoying the event as a guest more than an attendee and a vendor. Yeah, yeah. no, definitely. Um, that's part of it. It's always, you know, you're, you're always on, I guess is the way to say it. Um, like Jason was saying, Howard, I wanted to ask you, Howard, what do you think about, you know, Instagram? Because I feel like as you're talking and you're talking about having to, you know, I mean, even us, look, we can, in a matter of minutes, we set up our video, you know, podcast, we were doing audio before we we're able to do video now. And I feel like there are Instagram models and I use that in quotes, but they can get themselves out there to millions of people in just a matter of days, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I'm not an Instagram model, but, uh, <laughs> but I know that you can take pictures on Instagram and put yourself out there where in your case, you may have been having to go to auditions, casting calls. Oh, now yeah, people right. see you on Instagram and they, people become famous through that. Yeah. It's, it's, com it's, it's completely different. I mean, the whole face of the whole industry is different. I mean, I, I wouldn't even know how to start or, you know, I have friends um, that and, and girlfriends and people that I know that are, are in the business and looking to get into the business. And there's so many avenues now to do all sorts of modeling in that sense. And that's great. I mean, I think it's wonderful that there, everything is open, but there is something to be said to where you have to, I'm not even going to speak like that. They not, they're not working or saying that they're not doing the work but it's 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 interesting the um i guess the word that comes to my mind is like the journey to get to where it is like the journey there is so different like i had to stand in line and sit in calls and send so many composites and of, of and pictures to just i mean there was it just was it's just the you know technology is just completely blossom to the point where you know everything's on a chip or everything you know you know you're sending actual hard copies and going to kinko's which was where i you know my kinko's and you guys yeah. know kinko's i know exactly yeah. what you're talking yeah. about yeah, yeah. so like we're, i'm going kinko's. over to kinko's spending hundreds of dollars to get like my 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 my, my you know my headshot like you know mass produced and sending it out to all these houses and stuff just it's just a different it's a totally different thing so that's an yeah. interesting but, thing uh, howard just to Think about the finances without giving real, you know, actual numbers. How much do you think you invested in getting your likeness out there versus the return and <laughs> maybe even splitting that off to the enjoyment of the journey? Like you're saying, what is the actual return on investment versus just the experience of the investment? That's a good question because in the beginning, you know, they, uh, most agencies and, and, and most places when you're, you're going to this is, you know, you, this is the industry you're, you're looking at and, and they, you know, most of the time they'll say, um, just send a Polaroid of yourself, you know, a headshot and a good body shot picture of yourself. Polaroid, just something cheap. Well, that's not what they, they're really, look they are looking for that. If you're like a Cindy Crawford or a Angela, you know, a, a, a Christy Tur Turlington or Kate Moss, you know, maybe those girls and some of those people like that probably sent or got, you know, they, they got discovered in a, in a more mundane way, maybe. But most models, if this is something that they're typically doing, they're going to go get a semi-professional headshot, semi-professional body, you know, full full length shot, and they're going to have it done on really good paper and have it, you know, have it done well. So, I mean, I didn't send, send a Polaroid in. I actually went and got, a, you know, went to a professional and had some pictures done. So to answer your question about how much it costs, it, I mean, I don't have a number in my head, but it was... It was, you know, it's an investment. It's an investment in yourself. And then, you know, in the beginning, you're not going to make a lot of money, you know, unless you land a really great job or you get signed by a really great company. But as, as, as you get your face out there and you do better, women are always going to make more still to this day. They're still going to make more. It's, it's a beauty industry for women. Uh, men are an auxiliary to that. Um, but you can make a decent living. So, you know, at, at a certain point, it was kind of evening out a little bit, but you're still going to have to keep taking a lot of pictures. If you have an agent, that's something that they'll, they'll cover. You know, you don't have to go out and find, you know, photographers, you know, they'll find that for you. But in the beginning, you're going to, you're going to invest. Yes. Sure. So Howard, I am, um, I'm an artist. And then I also am, I teach art at um, Cal State Northridge. And 
one of the things that I talk to my students about too is is this journey the kind of what you're talking about one about critique in hearing and being able to um, to buffer yourself from what you're hearing because people are 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 really giving you information that um, maybe you don't want to hear but it's going to make you better at some point down the line and and that you can if you can separate yourself from the pain of hearing that then that is a powerful um, mindset to be in. And then also when you were talking about these headshots, you know, yeah, Polaroids or Xerox or any of those things, like, yeah, people that when, if, if you are, if, if I were to get something from somebody that was a Xerox as opposed to a really nice heavy duty, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking of business cards or anything, you know, and that tactile feel. And when you're holding a photograph, like an actual gelatin silver photograph or something, you know, that, that is, there's, it's the presentation of that. It's the presentation of yourself. Whereas if it's this trifolded Xerox thing that you've sent in a business envelope, yeah, that's not going to cut it. And I think right. we, we can equate that in the restaurant industry or to the beverage industry to, you know, you can feel the care that's provided when a bartender hand muddles their ingredients and shakes and takes some care with the, the garnish or that chef really, you know, you know, Howard, you're in the food industry with me now. You can relate to the, the chef that takes quality ingredients and really has a finesse with it. I'm hearing the same thing, Curtis, what you're describing, where, the, the care and the passion and the pride of yourself and your identity translates through the delivery of the, the photograph or the, the headshot. Jason, that is, that is the, the point that I think Howard is making as well as I am too. Then when I'm talking to my students that this is the pride you're taking in your, whatever, whatever your craft is, craft that, that is what it, that's what you have to. And, and if, and if you're not willing to, to, um, at least put that I don't even because it sounds because there's there's a lot there's a lot of privilege in in being able to afford whatever craft you're doing and, and to put it out there uh, and so I don't want that to sound like to, to sound that way but but there's a lot that's read into the quality of the materials I yeah. totally agree I mean I think that's that's what we're that's exactly that this this conversation just speaks to just that I mean, if this is something you choose to do, whatever it is, um, you you, you want to at least put your best foot forward, your your best effort out. And this particular thing is just like to me an NBA pick. Models don't make money. Let's just there's a lot of models out there. Top models make money. Right. You know. Uh, um, so so what I'm saying is there's so you know that the pool is very small. You know, for the for those that are able to live this lavish life, but. On the flip side of that, when you're young, and this is what you know, I think um, Jason w was trying to relay to me uh, about to, you know the, where the conversation is and where you want it to go too. In a lot of ways, is it is fun. It is fun. It is something to me that I think if you have the opportunity to do it and you have the um, you have the wherewithal to be able to stand some of this stuff and and you have a second job too to support yourself <laughs> during this time, it's fun. You know, it's it's fun because um, uh, some of the places and some of the people I've met, or I probably would have never met them if I wasn't doing what I was doing. So it is definitely a, a one of those a chance of a lifetime kind of position in in a lot of ways. Yeah, Howard, I have I have a question for you to go. Um, you know, actors and um, models, you always hear this story of someone being discovered when they didn't even want to be a model. Oh, or an yeah. actor, right? And you guys are talking about the hard work and Jason was talking about restaurant and bar business. I think we, we can equate this to all the different ones, but did you personally know anybody who just was sitting on the beat? I mean, I've heard stories, some of these famous, especially the female models, I've heard stories of, they were just, uh, they went to a party with a friend and the friend was the one who wanted to be a model. And then all of a sudden they discovered, you know, the next Cindy Crawford or whatever. Someone who had, you know, no training of being a model, no headshots, no anything, and they catapult. Did you know anybody like that? They don't have yeah, to be I knew plenty. famous, but I, I knew plenty, and and I knew plenty. And there was one when I first started, and that was a long time ago. I was probably about twenty three or four. 
um, young models under 21 have a chaperone. And there was a girl that came from um, uh, like the Swedish, like Sweden, I wanna say Sweden or Denmark. Um, I can't remember exactly where she was, where it was one of those countries. And she was 17 years old. And she looked like, um, like a blonde goddess. She was gorgeous. She was about 5'11", 17 years old, white blonde hair, white lashes and white eyebrows. And that was really interesting and different. But she was really beautiful. She had these beautiful features and everything. But, you know, she was super young. And she was just out doing what I think she was in high school and somebody, a, a scout came in to one of the, the high school and she was sitting in the bleachers and they, they scouted her that quickly. She was living with her grandmother. Next thing you know, she was signed and sent over to New York. And we met at a party in Chicago. And she had her chaperone. Chaperones usually are somewhere around, especially when they're under, when they're under uh, 21. And um, and to, to your to your point, they they get discovered like that all the time. Um, and those typical models, I I sense I tend to believe models that get discovered in a, a very natural way tend to do better. I don't know oh, what really? it is. The ones that seem, yeah, the ones because I I think it's because they're not looking for it, and and somebody wants that look, meaning the scout, the agent, or whoever, right. the manager. So. You know, it kind of makes sense that if somebody's looking for a look, they're going to probably do better as opposed to the masses trying to do the job. You know what I mean? So I, I think, but I think that's, I think that's the point. But I, but I have met a, a lot of models that have been discovered that way. The, yeah, this chaperone funny. idea is, uh, is intriguing to me, this being a, a chaperone. Most guy models get discovered that way, to be honest, because they're not really, most guys just don't really look at it as a real right. industry until it becomes a real industry where they can pay their bills and pay an apartment rent. And then usually most male models kind of lead into an acting career. So it, it, it is a start definitely for most guys, women, like I said, they get paid more. So it is definitely an industry that, you know, they can do very, very well, you know, in that sense. So with that being said, Howard, we were talking early on about some of the after parties, some of the, the lifestyle, and with this historically being a beverage focused show, yeah. can we tie those things together a little bit? Can you tell me about some of the lifestyle you experienced and maybe even yeah. how, you know, keeping on the intellectual side, cause I'm really digging this stream of thought, but maybe yeah. how that translates to some of your adult life, like what you experience as a male model and some of the lifestyle that maybe you can be grateful for these days. I'm like, Hey, that actually was pretty cool. And it translated to my current life. Well, one party in particular that was really fun, this was here. Um, uh, I went up to a party and this is when Hypnotic was really, really popular. Remember oh my hypnotic? God, we just talked Jason, about Hypnotic Jason a few shows back. Hypnotic. I used Jason to be on the Incredible Hulk train. My buddy Incredible Terrell, <laughs> shout out to Terrell Jones. He, years ago, when we used to party in club in Santa Barbara. He got me on the Incredible Hulk train. And it's Hennessy and Hypnotic. The brown oh, yeah. and the blue turns into green. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I was there. And you're stealing my thunder, Jason. That's sorry, exactly I'm what sorry. I was going to tell you. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like Howard may have had a few. Uh, <laughs> yeah. well, well, it was there was a famous basketball player's brother that lived in the Hollywood Hills somewhere, and uh, I was with a girlfriend of mine, and we got invited to this party. So we go up to the party, and uh, they have like just cases of hypnotic and Hennessy. And I didn't really drink either one of those, I, especially hypnotic. I was very familiar with Hennessy to a degree because a lot of my, my partners and friends and stuff, they, you know, back in college, they were drinking that stuff. But uh, not the really good stuff, but the just your regular Hennessy. But they had the really good stuff. With, and then they were mixing it with, with the hypnotic and it was like this cocktail like it was like this thing, like in the late nineties. And, uh, but the party was fabulous. You know, there was lots of celebrity sites. This is when Paris Hilton was doing her show and her and Nick, uh, what's the other girl? N Nicole Richie was doing yeah, her Nicole show. Richie. So the friend had, had Paris come into the house and uh, it was, it was an interesting time. Yeah, it was an interesting time. It was a time where people like, like people actually did do a lot of things together because it was just different. It wasn't, you didn't have all of 
the, the technical abilities and capabilities we have. So people congregated differently. They, they socialized and, conver and conversation was different. Um, there was a lot more clubs and a lot more parties happening. So I'm not, you know, I'm kind of out of that scene now. So I don't know. What you, so when you're saying technical, are you just talking like social media yeah, kind of thing? Yeah, social media yeah. wasn't, it was non-existent really in 98. It just yeah. wasn't. You know, people had AOL chat rooms and stuff like that. Like it wasn't, <laughs> really, it wasn't anything like it is now. People actually had to go out and meet people and go, people yeah. had cocktail parties and stuff. It's just a different scene, but, uh, and the parties were big. They were raging. Like there was a lot of stuff going on back in the late 80s and early 90s. So, <laughs> Uh, but that was one particular party that kind of stuck out to my mind. And then there was another one, if you don't mind, there was another one called, there was a big mogul guy here. And I'm gonna just gonna, they, they called him Dr. Winky. And Dr. Winky had this huge house. I was here for a while working and there was a huge house in the hills. And he used to build these big elaborate house parties. He had um, like a huge sound systems, girls on roller skates with like the trays and all of that with notions and stuff. I mean, he had it, 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 just craziness, you know, like, but fun, you know, people were having fun. There was no shootings. Uh, it was just fun, just unadulterated fun for adults. Yeah. But it definitely was fun. You could, and you know, I can see how you can get lost in some of that kind of stuff, but, uh, but those two kind of stuck out of my mind as probably some of the most epic party parties I've been to. Now, Joby, if you notice too, when you look at the, the video screens right now, the two guys who are really focusing on what the party scene looked like, besides me asking the question, are the two yeah. guys with the, the gray hair. So like the lifestyle, I think, <laughs> caught up with them. And, you know, there's definitely some aging that occurred based on those wagers that may have been attended. Right. Howard, you and I now. I think I think the other two are actually coloring their hair. So <laughs> I actually, I, I, I'm lucky. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but Howard, we are we can count ourselves lucky that we can remember the early '80s right. and that that we're we that we're, we're a lot older than right now. Imagine. But I think before we go any further with this, I I do think that um, we need to um, figure out how to use. Dr. Winky in every single episode for me. <laughs> That's not really, what was his name? That's not his name. <laughs> was it, Howard, we, wasn't it Dr. Winky? Can, can it's we Dr. Say, Winky. Winky. But we Dr. must Winky. say in, in front of every reference, it must be affectionately known as Dr. Winky. But affectionately known as Dr. Winky. And funny, Howard, as, as you're talking and, and about he, these parties. That was, that was, it was epic. I mean, man. Epic. I, I have a I have an answer for you, Howard. Why those parties don't exist anymore? Cell phones, right. cell phones and social media. Two. You see, we we we're all from the time where I mean, if there was a record of my twenties, man, that would be bad news for me. I would not want a social media history of my twenties <laughs> out there. Just think about it. That's what happened. And people oh yeah, I mean, filming and and videotape videotape. Did they even call it that? Cell phone right. recording? What is it? No called? one really wants to be recording. held accountable. That's what you're just getting recording, at. right? I think it's just recording. Yeah, people were recording. Now people start recording anytime yeah. something happens. So people can't do anything. They I would just pick that phone up for celebrity right now. I, I think it's I more than the flip. phrase recording. I think it's more admitting into evidence, sir. Yeah, <laughs> posting. Absolutely. Immediate post. Immediately uploading. I, <laughs> I totally agree. I, I it's just so different now. Like fun is different. Everything's different. Yeah. But but I mean, you know, this is why this is what you guys are doing is important because it's it's still kind of it it, it fringes on both sides of the fence. You know, you're you're young enough to be able to to understand what's happening now and then you know you have the wisdom to know where where we came from too in a lot of ways. And you know, as long as we can have a, a balance and I think, you know, to your point about the cell phones, like I really have to be very, like um, I have to think about not picking up my phone a lot because it's such a habit. And I don't even know why I'm picking it up because nobody's calling me. Like, you know, like I don't need to pick it up. Well, I just do it, you know? I, I saw a meme I think, not too long ago, Howard, that said basically your phone is a camera with calling ability. <laughs> and that's what it should be. But right, that's really, it, really it, what it should be. Yeah, and if it was if it was only a phone with calling ability, Jason, then sorry, then I think you know what I just realized okay, but, but the words that came out of my mouth were totally incorrect. 
<laughs> it was a, it is. But that's what I think it should be. Yeah, it should be a phone with calling capability. It's supposed to be, the, the phrase was supposed to be, it's a camera with calling ability. And that right there, I think, just dated me. I think that was my age coming out. <laughs> so, think, so, Howard, I just want to let you know that um, when we, when Joby, Jason, and I meet again in a few days and, and figure out what we're going to do for the next show, that yeah. Jason is going to say, hey, you know what? I've got this, um, I've got this friend of mine who used to be a male model. How about we do this show? <laughs> Jason, I am never going to outlive the fact that I was really drunk on a relaunch episode and pitched a show, and then next episode pitched it again. Am I? I'm never going to outlive that. Well, yeah, I, I, know, I, I appreciate, okay. I appreciate the honor. So, so let's pivot I, I then, Howard. Say, is there ever, is there ever a yeah. time where you couldn't outlive something that happened to you at one of your parties or one of your gigs? <laughs> outlive. Like, is there something that no matter what show you went to later on, what gig you went to or what after party you went to, someone always referenced, Howard, do you remember that one time when you did? Oh, yeah. I mean, of course. That, that, that happens. It happens. You know, I mean, I can't think of any one particular time, but it definitely has happened. I mean, yeah, it, all, it always happens because, but I, I will say, Jason, you know me well enough now to know that I'm never going to be that out of control or, or to, um, how am I gonna say? I'm, I'm always gonna have a level of decorum. So if you're talking in, in, those, in that frame, maybe not. But, but maybe something I've said that maybe pissed somebody off or something definitely sure. has happened. Yeah, of course. Well, I think course, Joby, you know, the best way. And I keep going back to this festival concept, Joby, that you know, we've been to enough charity events, enough beer festivals. I like that word, Howard, decorum. Because you can have a good time without going beyond the boundaries of, you know, acceptable and decorum sometimes is elusive to those individuals that just want to totally, uh, you know, give themselves to the event. Well, I think that's okay, too. I mean, I think that's okay, too, if everyone is doing it. Yeah. See, it's all about it's all about what what's happening around you too. Like you have everybody has their own thing, right? And everybody has a way of uh, a way to act. But if you're like at Burning Man, and every, I mean, and you're sitting up here with a top hat and a bow tie, and a three piece suit, then you look crazy trying to have a level of decorum. It's about your it's about your environment. If you're, everybody's going up up in smoke, and then you're not, then maybe you should leave or you join them. It's one sure. or the other to me. Like you can't be, you know what I mean? It's like you, you, you have to kind of feel out your environment. Yeah. Like I, I think everybody should do what's right for them in that environment. But I also think you should be part of it too, if that makes sense. You know, um, yes, absolutely. And I'm just looking at um, our clock and everything else. And, and that seems like a, a really great spot for us just to take a break. Yeah. I need a refill. Howard, when was the last time you got a refill? I saw you do this with your glass. Is that's empty, I right? I think I'm, I'm almost. I'm actually almost empty. Yeah. 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 Right. So it's time for time for drinks all around. So um, Howard, stick around because we're going to come back for last call, which just means that there are no rules really because of last call. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, for those of you who are watching live, we got a number of viewers on Facebook and and a couple over there uh, in YouTube. Uh, take a look, uh, you know, stick with us. We'll, we'll be back here in just a few minutes. And for God's sake, share it out with your friends. We're rebooting. We're old guys who are coming back for a second tour right now. We're, you know, we're like Chicago on their third or fourth, like victory tour. Chicago in the eighties. <laughs> we're happy hour again. Share it out with your friends. We're having a good time. Howard Cumberlander, former male model, current friend of mine. We're happy to have you stick around for the last call. While we're taking a break. Go ahead and get yourself a refreshed beverage. All right, welcome back to Happy Hour again. I am Curtis Taylor. I'm here with Jason Hendrick, Joby Yobi, and Howard Cumberlander, our not former, but Kurt, once, Kurt. once and always male <laughs> model. Male model. We don't, you know, we we need to give respect where respect is due. Uh, this has been a great show so far. Howard, thanks so much for joining us um, this evening, talking about whatever it was that we talked about in the last <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> we, yeah, I, it, I was, it, was, it was one yeah. thing to the next, and there was a lot of serious shit in there. I know that. 
it, it intermixed with, um, you know, was it um, I thought, oh, yeah. about Kate Moss and, and, and Heidi Klum and, and was all it of serious, the serious shit though, Curtis? Was it, was it the Tigra or Magnum or Blue Steel serious? Oh, that's pretty serious. That's a serious <laughs> book. <laughs> so we're yeah, going to talk get... before, as we're coming into break, Howard, we were talking about Mai Tais and you were gushing yeah. about Mai Tais for a second. But I do want to ask, as a finishing to our serious slash moderately serious conversation about male modeling, did you have a look? And, and I'm trying to be like serious about that. Did you have something that you're always going to? Did you have some headshots that you saw like co cohesion amongst? I did. That's a good question because I mean, you know, all joking aside, I mean, I, I, I you know, I, I, I hope you know, that, you know, that I stood out when I was doing, you know, I, you know, I stood out or had a standout quality when I was doing it. And I think it was somewhere, something, um, it was a certain look that I did give um, when, when, when um, I was doing some photograph work. So I, and I think it was somewhere in the eyes. I think it was a look. Uh, I don't, I wouldn't call it anything in particular, you know, but I would say that when I look back at some of the pictures that I had, that, that look was kind of present and it was it <laughs> i mean like i i kind of look at it now and think it looks melon like melancholy sort of but so it, if we it pressured you right now howard could you recreate it i don't think i, I don't know because i think i'm such a dork right now so i mean <laughs> but I think, I think i thought it was cool then so I, mean, I don't know if it would even come off right i mean i think right now you know what i mean i think right now i think I've grown into whatever this is. So this is the look. Uh, Howard, on your LinkedIn, is that the look <laughs> you're talking about? I'm on your LinkedIn right now. I'm not gonna put it behind me, don't worry. You know what's funny? I, I don't your have a for... lot of pictures. I don't even have a lot of pictures out there. So it's like- Yeah, really cause you're pre-internet, because... you are pre -internet, you see? You're pre-Google. That's what I'm saying. Like I, it was, that's what I'm, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like you can go and look at all of like, from Kim Kardashian- From when she was my, born. I, you have nine million pictures out there. I mean, I took nine million pictures and there's not one on the internet that I see. Matter of fact, I think the last show I did was at the, L I did a show for the LA, um, uh, the LA uh, a spring fashion show like in 2000. And that's when, right around that time, that's when the internet started to really blow up and people kind of around 98, 99 or whatever. So I think that was the last show that it could have even been on any sort of online platform. That's but that's perfect. actually one of my, that's one. I can't get his face. It's in the background. I, I love it. So I, have I can't to get tell his you. face. It cut off his no, face. It's a great can, picture, okay, Howard. Everyone's got to search it. Look it Fantastic up. Fantastic picture, man. Yeah, Howard Cumberlander. I will tell you, Joby, the first time I saw that, because I recently connected with you, Howard, on LinkedIn as well. The first thing I thought, Denzel Washington. That's is a fantastic picture. I'm I think well, it, puts, it puts Denzel Washington to shame. Come on now. All right. Well, I think enough. it's okay. I, I, don't, I didn't want you to get offended, so I only put like half of it. So we'll, here we'll, go, uh, here we'll go to Mexico. I'm in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Mexico, which actually is a perfect switch. So, Howard, we were talking about, like, basically party drinks, cocktails. Yeah, yeah. The break, you were talking about loving a Mai Tai. Why do you love a Mai Tai? I, well, I love the citrus. I love, I love the, I think I love the color. I think I love the color of, of the cocktail. I mean, I do like the taste of it, but, and it, you know, it reminds you of the tropics and being like in some beautiful island or some kind of feel. Like it's, it's such a whole, it's such a, it's such a vacation drink, right? You know, just make Mai Tais at home. Some people do, but I, I don't, you know, but like it, it just reminds you, you know, of being on vacation and chilling somewhere in a beautiful locale but i think i like the color the color combination when it's made well sure and i like what you said in terms of it being a um a vacation drink though not because i like vacation drinks but actually the opposite and curtis as someone who makes your own you know like flavored seltzer water and like tonic like bubbly direction i think you can appreciate the ingredients because a vacation drink and joby as someone who owns a bar and a restaurant you mm. know that there is a like a cruise line or a resort style beverage. And then there's oh, yeah, a true. traditional beverage and going with a mixer versus fresh squeezed juices is two very distinct deviations. So let's talk about just like the vibrancy. Well, 
I'm already gushing about my own segment. That's bullshit. <laughs> let me let me pass it to my co-host. Tell me why you guys like one or the other. Do you like the vacation style mixer or do you prefer fresh juices? Curtis is drinking. I like fresh juices, but I will say vacation depends what I'm doing. But gin and tonic is my is kind of my go-to when I don't want to get I don't want to get fancy with the ingredients, although I've had some really fancy gin and tonics that are beautiful with, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the hotel in LA, Howard, I think it's SLS. And in the downstairs bar, they have this like, I don't know, $28 gin and tonic, whatever. The, the ice has flowers, mel- uh, sorry, frozen into the ice. Wow. So it's just beautiful when you get it and you get, and this is my favorite, you get the tonic on the side. Fever tree tonic, which is delicious. So you can pour as much, you know, as you're going through, you pour a little more, you know, you don't get it watered down. So GNT, GNT is my go-to. Uh, I don't do a lot of the crazy tropical drinks, even on vacation. Um, I try to keep it simple. Tequila, club soda, and lime. Love that. Can't go wrong. It's like the, uh, the light margarita. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I might have to try the tequila, club soda, and lime. It's good. You could drink it all night, Curtis. Yeah. Especially yeah. Yeah. tequila. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I test to that. <laughs> so I, I think when you know if you're if I'm at a tiki bar, then then I'm then yeah I'm all in on everything, right? And yeah. I love the the nostalgia and the history of tiki bars and how all of that tiki culture came from from World War II and the GIs that were coming back to the United States and and they had seen these tiki bars in Hawaii. And then when they moved back to what, you know, Southern California or South Dakota or New York, they were, they decided, I want to drop the floor in my living room and put bamboo in the corner and let's do these drinks because that's what, what they were doing. But, you know, my first, the, the, the first, it wasn't the first, um, my most memorable, um, my tie though was actually on a boat that I was in Maui and we were going out to Molokini. So it's a sunken volcano and we did snuba where the tank is on a floater and then you can go down 40 feet kind of thing. And then on the way back, so uh, on the way back, they were making um, Mai Tais and it was just Mrs. T's and it was whatever they were doing, but we had been in the water all day. We'd seen some gorgeous fish. We actually caught tuna on the way back and we're eating fresh raw poke and then these Mai Tais were just the like even though it was this this mixer it was just this incredible kind of thing well you know how are you were referencing that kind of direction in the last segment in terms of the environment and sometimes the nostalgia of what you experience is all tied to the environment we experience that all the time in the beverage and the food industry you know what wine tasted great on my vacation when I bring that bottle home never tastes quite the same because the environment really dictates how I experience the activity or the event. And, you know, there's been so many times where like you're saying, Curtis out on a boat, you know, that, that, that sip of the most like concocted drink or whatever it was, was the best thing ever. And you come back and you have it again. You're like, Oh, I can't believe I enjoyed it. But there was something about that moment that just made you feel right. Oh, yeah. Jason, I think about that, the, the, that same concept all the time when I hear people say that they, they would love a, a, a Coors banquet. And maybe you and I, <laughs> were we here like just last week or two weeks ago? You may, did you say that? I, I believe like, I was. Yeah, I may have said that. Like, like, or Coors Light or whatever. Like, I don't understand that at all. Talking about guilty pleasure. That's their nostalgia. That's what it is, right? And so, so, like, for me now, I'm just gonna drink water. But like, if that's your, if that is your nostalgic kind of trip, then then do it definitely. So, Howard, I gotta ask you, quarantine drink. If you could only drink one drink for all of quarantine, what would it be? Hendrix um, martini up with a twist, or or maybe an olive, all right. or a cucumber. Probably a cucumber. Oh, I, cucumber! You can put vibrancy. all of them in there. All right, you can put all of them in there. Yeah, I could, but I think just a really clean, great Hendrix martini up with a cucumber. I like it. You're a gin man. I like it. I, I'm I'm a total gin man. Yeah. That sounds that sounds awesome. <laughs> 
Yeah, I never, I never understood Howard. I never understood vodka martinis. Like, no, uh, give me something that like, because if it's a good vodka, then it's not supposed to have any flavor. And if I can taste the vodka, then I don't want it. And so, like, give me the gin. That's why you flavor it with starter. It's the starter liquor. You know what I mean? It's like an amaretto sour. You, you I, I, like it's like your starter cocktail to to do all of everything else, well, and then you know. Fair enough. Go ahead. We're potentially Fair opening enough. Pandora's box, Howard, but I don't know about you. <laughs> vodka was not my starter liquor. I believe peach schnapps was my starter liquor. That was like the first well, thing. I, yeah. <laughs> I know, but when you but when you back. go out, you know, didn't you when you go out, didn't you get like a a Midori a sour? That was every girl I tried to go out with was Midori sour. That was the oh starter. gosh. That was another it's one. Disgusting ass drink. There's no alcohol in Midori. It's like 18% alcohol or something. Oh. And then you throw oh, in sour. sugary, on sweet, yeah. and just. Yeah. Amaretto sour. I have not heard that. When somebody orders that, I, I just, it makes me laugh because. Well, it's like, that was like the, so Amaretto, you know, it comes in that pretty brown, beautiful. Yes. That's the bottle. good stuff. But like, I remember that was like one of the first things we could have when I was a, like a youngster, like around Christmas time, we could have a little bit of Amaretto, you know, like, and it was good. So then, you know, we got a little Amaretto sour and then, you know, go in, it, you know, went to college and had a whole bunch of nasty things. But then, but then I remember when I was like going out, you know, everybody was ordering vodka uh, cranberry or vodka Red Bulls. And that was the thing. And then it was just vodka for like models. You had vodka water or you just yep. had vodka rocks or vodka soda. There was no, you, you, you know, there was no sugar. You couldn't have calories, calories, right? That's, so that's it was been my, made, theory, my drink was vodka soda with the lime. And it's glad Howard be, confirmed it. Howard has confirmed it for me. I've yeah. always heard that, that models drink vodka soda and they, eat, and they eat crackers. Is that true? Well, well, you saltines. Could eat, you, saltines you, that that was your carb, but you're really supposed to just stay on a vegetable, brown rice, and lean chicken diet. And smoke cigarettes, of course, and do other stuff. And a ton of cigarettes and a ton of other things. <laughs> but I mean, you know, whatever whatever it took to keep you as for women a size zero to sour size two, zero to size two for women, and a, a man's perfect proportion would be a 5'11", 29 to thirty two inch waist, about a forty four forty two chest, and probably a about 32 hip. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. out too because I'm 5'5 five, five and I'm I'm out. But Howard, you know what I'm going to ask. But, how but closely did I'm you saying, fit that guys. mold? How closely but were that's you fit that saying. mold? But, but I did. But that's what I'm saying. I didn't. I fit more the athletic mold. I was always more athletic. So they put me more on the athletic kind of side. But most editorial male models, that's their mold. Okay. Well, Howard, when you if you come out to Ventura, I'm gonna plug a, a fellow establishment. Um, preferably once everything opens up, so we could sit in there. We're gonna get you a mai tai from Ventiki. Oh, I love All that. you need is one, maybe two. Curtis, you can, Jason, you can back me up. <laughs> well, having they having lived one strong. block away from Ventiki at one time, yeah, two is almost too many. Trying to go one block it's, home, and, and they have all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, the jet pilot. You know. I, we took a we, uh, Jason, I, uh, Jason's colleague and ours, uh, our colleague uh, Elizabeth Tohikin. We went to a great tohi, uh, tiki bar uh, in Hollywood. I'm trying to think of the name of it right now, but it's yeah, it's escaping uh, me. But it's a it's a great tiki bar right here off of Hollywood Boulevard. Had the best drinks and had a great time too. But that was the first time I've ever been to a tiki bar. Yeah, it can be fun. And this one's a small place here in Ventura, and tiki's like physically and you know the. Thank you. The space is small. It's tight. Yeah. But it, great, it creates great uh, communal interactions, depending on how many Mai Tais you've had. Atmosphere. <laughs> yeah. my, my favorite Atmosphere. is the uh, jet pilot, too, because every time you order a jet pilot. A robot, the... Jason. <laughs> but every time you order a jet pilot, they throw in a theme song from uh, Top Gun. So, you know, the lights yeah, go down. And... It's, uh, it's the kind of place where you either start your night or you end your night, but yeah. um, they close relatively early, so. If you're ending well, these your night days, there, they do. They used to close at midnight. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Which I, I guess that is not early, but it's kind of early. Right. Well, I'd love and to. I'd love age. to do that. That'd be fun. Yeah, and somebody in my age demographic, I start my night and end my night in the same spot. In the same place. <laughs> <laughs> for a ride home. Well, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. It's a uh, and they they use the um 
was something that Jason was alluding to earlier. They use the kind of original recipe Mai Tai, and it's it's really good. I mean, yeah. it's like my favorite, one of my favorite drinks around town. Well, I'm up for it. Yeah, there let's you go. do it. What, once they, once they uh, reopen California, we'll, we'll get you out. We were talking before we came into live broadcast, Howard, about the fact that I personally think from the satellite, you're going to see a big banner across California that says grand reopening or now open, opening soon. Something that refers to the fact that California. Probably so. I mean, they should if they don't. We got to advertise right. ourselves. Hollywood has always gone big. California has always been on the map for going outlandishly huge with their presentation. We've got to have something so. that shows up from the Hubble. I totally agree with you. I think they should. I mean, this is the land of entertainment. Why not do something like that? Absolutely. Yeah. I think you guys should start a campaign. I think on that note, we should wrap up. Definitely. Howard, again, thank you so that was much. Awesome, Howard. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, great conversations, wonderful um, uh, drinks all around for all of us. I mean, I don't know what you're all drinking, but my. My G and T's were fabulous. <laughs> yeah, and G &G's all around. A, a future Mai Tai is is all we really need. That sounds yes. good. Well, thank you. All right, so for all of those um, listening, watching live, just uh, a, a quick reminder: we're on Spotify podcast and iTunes. So check us out there. If if you don't have the hour and a half to watch us here live you know, and you need something to keep you awake during your drive, your commute in and out, wherever you are, find us there, happy hour again on both sites. Also, um, just, you know, subscribe and share out all of our YouTube links. That'd be awesome. We need to reach out Howard Cumberlander because he's a cool guy. We've had a lot yes. of fun with him. And on his LinkedIn um, page, there is, is a, there is a great picture. Yeah, there's a great picture. It's a potential Denzel Washington, like oh, side by God. side. <laughs> I'm going to get you out of the you. former male model. I'm going, going to get you, but I, but I love you, though. I love you, Jason. Thank you. It's been a great All time. Right, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, Howard. Thank and you, guys. Howard. You. It's, uh, thanks for joining us this evening, and cheers. We'll catch you next week. Cheers. Very cool. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Happy Hour Again. We'll be back next week with more questionable content, great guests, and drinks all around.